Last night, John Lackey continued to give the Angels solid starting pitching until rookie Dallas McPherson's deep blast put the Halos ahead for good. Mr. Automatic rang up the final four outs, giving the Angels a split versus baseball's best team. Tonight, Paul Bird gets the ball against his old teammates as the struggling Royals come to town. Angels baseball is next. Welcome to the Big A for a weekend series with the Kansas City Royals and the Angels. Hi everybody, Steve Fiziak, Rex Adler with you, and what an absolutely marvelous comeback by the Angels last night. Dallas McPherson's home run in the seventh wins it. Three to two over Chicago and Rex it was moments like McPherson that provide the drama but the ability of the Angels starting pitchers and bullpen to keep the Halos in it is the whole story in itself. Oh let me tell you something the month of May the starters have been marvelous the quality starts we've been getting and let me tell you something their record is 14 and 9 that's the bottom line they're winning games but that ERA is a major league best during that month and taking over for K Rod in that bullpen has been Scott Shields and they couldn't have asked this guy to do anything more. Look what he's done. And a matter of fact that ERA is point nine six coming into tonight's game. He's been unhittable. Tonight's starter for the Angels is Paul Bird. He enjoyed his best year with the Kansas City Royals in 2002. He won 17 games and that's when he had all Royal fans kind of flapping their arms <laughs> when he would succeed. Bird wants to flap that ball on the outside part of the plate. Keep it out of the middle as they got him earlier this season in his first time he faced his former teammates in Kansas City. But Paul Bird certainly is a guy who throws strikes. He's fun to watch hoping his offense gives him some run support tonight. And Bird faces a team that has been struggling mightily throughout the year. The Angels hope they've got it again. They hope the emotions are on high as they take on the Royals. Angels, KC, coming up next on FSN West. <laughs> FSN West presents Angels Baseball, brought to you by Aplac. Ask about it at work. By Carl's Jr. The name of the game is Big Juicy Charbroiled Burgers. Score one today at Carl's Jr. By your Southern California Ford dealer. See your Ford dealer today. And by Gatorade Thirst Quencher. It's in the MLB. Is it in you? We expect a great crowd tonight here at Angels Stadium. Game one of a three game series between. The Royals and Angels the Angels come in at 27 and 20 they are tied with Texas for first place in the American League West right now they entertain KC and their Corona starting lineup will look like this and help a row will lead things off will be followed by David DeJesus and Mike Sweeney his last 18 games he has been on fire 362 with 17 RBIs included in that seven have been hit out of the yard Matt Stairs bats fourth and Emil Brown Terrence Long Mark Kean, John Buck and Ruben Gotai. The Carl's Jr. starting pitcher for the Angels is Paul Bird. He has been hot his last five. All five have been quality starts. Did lose his last game against the Dodgers, but a quality start at Dodger Stadium. Four wins, four losses this year. I like his walks to strikeouts. He's a guy who throws strikes, 10 walks this year. I mean, he's he hits the corners. He's a guy who relies on his spots and location. Sinking fastball, curve, slider. He's got the pitches. He got to stay out of the middle. You know he's got to pay these guys back. They beat him in his first time out, his first start as an Angel back in the first weekend of the series. So you know he's up against it, even facing his friends Mike Sweeney and Graffinino. Well, the Lexus defense behind Paul has been really sharp lately, with not any errors against the Chicago White Sox last two games. And Garrett Anderson, who's been troubled by that right hamstring, is back in the field playing left. Good to see him out there as well as Benji Molina. These are guys they've got to have in the lineup without Vladimir Guerrero. It's Juan Rivera in right. Well, Mike Sosha, he knows that even though Kansas City came in with the worst start in the history of the Kansas City Royals franchise, they will be a test. As Rex said, they took two of three from the Angels in April, but that's the only series the Royals have taken from the Halos the last three years. The new skipper is Bob Schaefer, took over for Tony Pena, who resigned just two weeks ago. Schaefer loves it. He says, I like everything about managing. The only thing I don't like is losing. At this level, 
they pay you to win. So it's been tough for him, but like I said, five and nine's not too shabby. He's hanging in there. They, this team's been they've been beat and, and abused. They get swept by a lot of different teams. They've only won three series this whole season. Little tapper. It's a tough play for Cabrera. His quick toss just does get Barroa at first base. Nice play by Cabrera. Really nice play. This is a check swing here. This is the shortstop Cabrera. You got to get on your horse. Fast runner. But you got to come get it. And that's exactly what Cabrera did. This one little play. You know, there's not much room for air there. You can't bobble with your glove in your hand in there. You can be safe. He's showing some gold glove skills. Well, the Angels will get their first look at David DeJesus not in a leadoff spot. He wore out the Angels last year, hitting over 500 in the lead spot. But against everybody else, he has struggled a bit, so they have moved him from the one to the two. He's batting 263 overall, 457 in his career against the Angels. But he was the thorn in the side in those three games in early April. He was on base eight times in the three games. Bird throws a strike right at the knees to David DeJesus. As Rex told you, Paul Bird lost his only start against Kansas City 6 to 2 on April 8th, gave up nine hits in seven innings, six runs, four earned, did not walk a man, and struck out four. And he gets a called strike three. There's that two seamer that runs back inside against a left hander. And he's not going to be overpowering that at 88, but he's a Craftsman at hitting his spots. You see this one, he kind of freezes the lefty because the lefty looks like it's going to stay inside and then it tails right back over the plate. Lefties are having their way against Paul Bird this year, though. They're hitting 317 off of it. There's a good pitch there. Riders are hitting 265. He's giving up four home runs three to lefties and one to righties. Here's Paul Bird's old friend Mike Sweeney. They played together when Bird was a member of the Royals. And Mike had a good rip on the fastball that runs just away and fouled back to the screen. 315, nine home runs, but seven of those home runs have come in the month of May. He is a local guy from Southern California, now 31 years old from Orange. Went to Ontario High School and led them to a state championship back in 1991. Faced his teammate Paul Bird and friend one time, went two for four off. Just low. You could see the way Bird delivered and held his body English, asking home plate umpire Jim Wolf, are you sure that was low? Wolf is the home plate umpire Randy Marsh at first base Sam Holbrook is at second and Larry Vanover at third. Didn't mean to do it as the ball raced inside on Sweeney fouls it off and the count will even at two balls and two strikes. But you just wonder how long Sweeney will be a member of the Royals organization. He is a guy who is coveted by many out there. And the Royals are going nowhere. They are 13 and 34 coming in, 19 and a half games behind the Chicago White Sox. Oh, what a great pitch by Paul Bird. And he gets two strikeouts in the first inning. De Jesus and Sweeney both gone. And the Angels will now send their offense to the plate against DJ Carrasco. Paul Bird with an excellent first inning getting Barreau on a ground out and striking out David DeJesus and Mike Sweeney. Now let's check out the SBC starting lineup for the Angels. Biggins, Erstad, Finley, Anderson, Rivera, Molina and Dallas McPherson the star of last night's game is two run home run beat the Sox three to two Cabrera hits eighth and Kennedy will hit ninth. On the mound a guy who has been a relief pitcher his entire career until this year and he's just making his third start of the season five four is the ERA 15 hits allowed 
That was quite a difference when you go from that bullpen to the starting mound. They got to do a lot of stuff with you. Now he's got all four pitches, but he's got to stay on top. That's what they want him. Guy Hanson, the pitching coach, wants him to stay up there. He normally will drop down and throw three-quarter sidearm, and he would do go up again. They want him to stay consistent, keep his arm angle up. But they also said stay simplified. Quit trying to do too much. And that's what they're wanting out of this youngster. And that's Guy Hansen, their pitching coach. And now Sean Figgin starts it just like he did last night. A shot into the corner. And he may not stop at two. He is off for third base. Here's the throw to third. It is a triple for Figgin. Biggins starting it. To me, it looks like he missed first base, but we'll see. Here we go. He hits it just like he wanted to, just like last night. Anytime he's in a gap, he's going to go for three. They're watching him at first base, and I was too, but we'll see if the umpires caught it. Sean Figgins, really nice start for the Angels with his fifth triple. It looks like he overstepped first base. They're going to they're going to try and appeal here. They'll wait till Carrasco comes set, and what a what a bummer this would be if they call him out. Well, Sweeney has not moved towards first base. The pitch is thrown, and Erstad pops it up. I didn't see him appeal during the. You know, Rex, on well? the replay, I thought he had touched it inside of the bag with his left foot. There, raise the end of it. Well, it's okay. I mean, I'm glad it didn't happen for the Angels, but his toe stepped over the base. Now might have caught it with his heel. Glad they didn't uh, mess him up there. But that was a really nice stroke. Well, Good now the Angels want to bring him in from third base, and Steve Finley, who has been struggling, one for his last 16, but Figgins with a 10-game hit streak now. And for Figgins, it was his fifth triple of the year. He had 17 last season. Lifted foul back and out of play. So Carrasco fights back to even the count at one and one. But that is not even close to what Jose Reyes of the New York Mets is doing. You know, Reyes has seven triples his last 10 games. Unheard of. Yeah, that's incredible. Triples aren't easy to get. Got to have good speed, but you got to find the right gap to hit him in down the lines. Finley gets a strike one and two. Definitely want to get him in. All you need to do is make a little contact here. Well, Steve does not look comfortable with the plate at all. He said that he's doing everything he can do. Because the results haven't been coming, but he says he never gives up, never gives in, and, and says that the cream will rise to the top eventually. Because it bothers him all the time. He says he, he he has to really do things to make him tired, and before he can even go to bed, because he has a hard time sleeping. So it's not about what he's done in the past; it's about now. Mickey Hatcher, hitting instructor. Rasco brings it low and inside. The count will even at two balls and two strikes. Nothing cures a slump better than a nice little two or three hit game. But now Schaefer bringing the infielders in. Finley's going to have to do more than hit a little ground ball. Just try to get under one. With one out, the Angels very aggressive in this situation. And there's a ground ball. Base hit through the hole. Right side. Figgin scores. Angels up one nothing. Another thing when you pull that infield in they don't have much range and they wouldn't have gotten this one anyway had they been back in regular depth. But this is a real nice ball here. You want to pull it if you can and there was a pitch you could pull to get it over there. Carrasco does have a sink some sink to his fastball. Angels on the board early in the first like they did last night. A triple by Figgins last night followed by a ground out by Erstad tonight. A triple now a base hit and Anderson chases the first pitch by DJ Carrasco fouled off. Carrasco had been a reliever all seven of his previous years in pro ball through the minors into the majors. He's been with four organizations. Baltimore's 26th round pick in 1997 out of Arizona. 
And 98 with Cleveland, 99 with Pittsburgh. And a Rule 5 pick by Kansas City in 2002. And he made the club that year, and they didn't hold on to him simply because he was a Rule 5 guy. He made the club because of his pitching in spring training that year and stuck with the club. They needed some starting pitching here with Anderson on the DL. They put him down in Omaha to get some work in. Get his pitch count up. Anderson pops it up. Shallow center backing up on Barroa, And he'll make the catch for the second out. That hit, hit an RBI by Finley really will help his confidence. That's, that's exactly what you need in your first at bat. And a hitter gets a hit in his first AB, he's saying, okay, I'm gonna have a good night. Confidence right away. Now you just wonder if Mike Sosha will send them. He has five stolen bases. You got two out, Juan Rivera coming up. Rivera had a great road trip with three home runs, nine RBIs as the Angels won six of their nine games. And on this home stand against the White Sox, just two for ten. Sean Figgins is DH tonight and Mike Sosha doesn't really like to use him in that spot because you take away his versatility. Juan Rivera has been getting his share of DHing against lefties. They tried to ban it against righties, but really the DH spot has is, is kind of been a suspect spot in the Angels' order, along with their, their team batting average. Team batting average is 244, one point above last place Oakland and Kansas City at 243. Carrasco has it, gets the force at first base, the out there, and uh, the Angels get a run on Figgins triple, Finley single, one nothing, Angels. Steve Finley gives the Angels a one nothing lead on his single to right, and now Paul Bird goes to work for the Angels in the second inning against Kansas City. Matt Stairs will lead things off. Stairs has been hot. Had two hits in Wednesday's game with a home run, but Casey lost all three to Texas. And by the way, the Rangers winning again. Great pitching. Six to one in the eighth inning over Chicago in the bottom of the eighth now. Texas has won six straight. Angels, Rangers tied for first place in the AL West with 27 wins, 20 losses. Stairs faced him just that one time early in the season and went 0 for 3 against Paul Bird. But you know, even as hot as the Rangers have been, the Angels are tied with them for first base. They picked up three games during that span, but the Angels are getting it done with good starting pitching, and the wins have come on timely hits. Like McPherson's last night. Stairs to center field. On comes Finley to make the catch. One out. And for every home run that an angel hits tonight, Coors Brewing Company will make a donation to Navidad and El Barrio. Navidad and El Barrio delivers more than 20,000 food baskets to needy families in Southern California each year. Now there's a look at the great crowd tonight, a crowd of better than 40,000 expected. Angels Royals game one of this series. We get a Friday fireworks show for you tonight and another one, a patriotic fireworks show tomorrow at the ballpark. 7.05 is the time. So come on down to the Big A. One o'clock Sunday afternoon affair with 12,000 Little Leaguers to be here on Sunday. Emil Brown, career minor leaguer. And he made the club out of spring training. 30 years old from Chicago. Total up all of his games, and they total about two years in the major leagues. He had a 200 major league average, 296 in the minors, and Bird gets a off speed pitch by him. Well, Texas tonight with the lead, six to one. Two home runs for Alfonso Soriano. Teixeira and Young have also gone deep, so that gives him 75 home runs. That's 38 more than the Angels. McPherson has it. And two out. McPherson's looking a lot better at third base, too. He's much more relaxed. 
You talk about how much he hits, works hard at that, but he also works on that defense, and that's going to be a big thing for him to continue to field that spot as well as he has been lately. Now Terrence Long, 295 last year with San Diego, but just having a real rough time with KC. Not much protection in the lineup, but he comes through with a base hit to right field. Royals have really had it tough. I mean, they, they started the season well, you know, taking two out of three here in that first weekend. But in six series in this month of May, they've gone down to the last day of each series, hoping to not get swept. In those six games, they won the last game three times and they lost three times. So it's been a difficult season already for these guys, and it's a much, it's going to be a long year for them. They have lost. 11 of their last 12 road games, 16 of their last 22 overall. Bird catches the low corner, and Mark Tian, another rookie to Kansas City, expecting big things from him. He was acquired in that Carlos Beltran deal last year where they got John Buck, Mark Tian, and also Mike Wood, who is a relief pitcher. So they've got three for one, even though Beltran, a big time star. Another strike on the inside corner and Tian not pulling the trigger. He's down 0 2. So Bird with plenty of options here. Tian's learning all about the big leagues just like McPherson is. It's not easy. He was on the disabled list right when the Angels were, were playing them in that first weekend. They put him on the DL for a while, but that was good for him. He was able to sit back and watch guys. That helped him. Talking to Bob Shea for the manager, he said, you know, This kid's going to be a good player. But the time he spent out, he did a lot of film watching and studied the hitters and the pitchers in the league and said it helped him with his confidence. He's down 0 2 here. Bird wants to finish him off. Tian hits it to left field. Garrett Anderson just drifts back, makes the catch. And that will do it for KC in the second inning. When we come back, we'll see yesterday's poster boy, Dallas McPherson, who went deep to win it. Angels have a one nothing lead they scored a run on Sean Figgins triple in the first and a single by Steve Finley now in the last of the second Benji Molina will lead it off against DJ Carrasco Molina takes it high and it's ball one Carrasco we told you first year as a starter with the Royals he's 6 1 2 15 28 years old from surprise Arizona Molina tries to drop it to right, but it's a foul ball and surprise Arizona, the home of Kansas City, when they have their spring training games. He grew up in the Arizona area as well. I told you Baltimore's 26th round pick in 97. Rexy had a really good start as debut this year against the Tampa Bay Devil Rays, gave up two runs in six innings. And he said he had never gone six innings. Even in high school, ah, it, it's a difficult job going, come, going as a from a reliever to a starter. It's not easy. No. First thing a, a you know a pitcher wants to do, they send him to the minor leagues to stretch him out and to get him some innings pitched and get him some pitches thrown. And, so it's a long process, but they like his mental makeup, and they're thinking that he, he could fit well into the future. He continues to keep his ball down. That's his big key, like every pitcher. You want to keep the ball down in the zone, and so far in this one, he's been missing. He's been up in the zone. The Angels want to capitalize on him. They want to get as many runs as they can. Molina gets a base hit to left field. Rico Corp defense. Royals are ninth in fielding this year. That's not too shabby. I'll tell you what, though, this combination up the middle, Burrow and Gotai, they're outstanding. And they haven't made an error all month. And that's nice for the pitching staff. It's going to help them turn some double plays and work well together. They look good. These two guys got good range, and they, they're energy players. So Dallas McPherson will try and keep it off the ground in the air. Maybe bust Carrasco like he. Drove one out last night against a quality starter in Jose Contreras. Angels were down two to one last of the seventh inning and McPherson hit a two run home run to give the Angels a three two lead and Donnelly Shields did the rest. 
Strike at the knees. Well, I'm sure that uh, if you ask Contreras about that pitch he threw McPherson, he'd say, I made a mistake by throwing him a fastball. He'd retired McPherson two times with fork balls and change ups, and his first pitch, he threw him a fastball in the inner half. The only pitch he can hit. That was a huge mistake. Wow, that's some uh, raise the bottom half of that zone. Well, so Nebraska might go right back there trying to get that double play. So far, it looks like home plate umpire Jim Wolf's given the corners. So, first time through the order, the hitter will figure that out, and anything close with two strikes will have to be hacked. John Buck giving the signals back there. That looks like two. It is. Carrasco threw the ball exactly where he wanted to that entire at bat against Dallas McPherson keeping it down and keeping it away from his power. Orlando Cabrera now digs in Orlando had four hits in the Chicago series three came in game one. He's had a bit of a shoulder problem since spring training. And his batting average has dipped to 229. You see what he's done in his career prior to that. Good thing is, though, like a mark of a true pro, is you separate your offense from your defense. He hasn't taken it out to defense at all. And he is the only Angel to have played in every single game this year. Well, he pops up to John Buck to end the second inning, and we'll head to the third. And the Halos up one nothing. Angels won nothing on KC this week on the Fox Saturday baseball game of the week. The Red Hot Padres look to continue their winning ways as they take on Moises Alou and the Giants. Coverage begins at 1 o'clock Pacific only on Fox. Padres in first place in the National League West by a half game over Arizona and over three and a half above the Dodgers. John Buck will lead things off in the third. All birds first pitch swung on and missed strike one. How about Jake Peavy last night for the Padres? Two hits shut out, complete game. That guy has been outstanding. He's got an ERA of two. They're up right now, three nothing on the Giants in the first inning. San Diego sending Brian Lawrence against Hennessy for the Giants. They've gone to the top of the ninth inning, and it's Texas six Chicago two Rangers have hit four home runs in that game. John Buck throws his bat away angrily as the ball is popped up to shallow left field and Orlando Cabrera makes the catch. Cabrera had to really go out and get that Anderson was playing him a little bit deep. Good to see Garrett Anderson back there. Angels kind of banged up with Anderson suffering a hamstring problem. Steve Finley was down for a little while with tightness in his groin and having some shoulder difficulties, but fighting through it. Seattle and Oakland both lost today. Oakland lost four to one to the Cleveland Indians, and Seattle lost five four to Tampa Bay. So Oakland, the A's are five and eighteen now in May. Here's Ruben Gotai. Paul Bird so far looking very good. He's keeping that ball down, hitting the spots, doing exactly like they want him to. He's Josh Paul's been getting all of his starts, but Mike Sosha said that wouldn't last long until he could get Benji back in there. He wants Benji to catch everybody, play every day. They want to keep him. Fresh though he's still nursing that sore right quadricep. Gonna hold their breath when he runs out there. That's where he, when he hurt his last one. Well, that one skips back to the screen. Burr has shown incredible control. As a matter of fact, he's thrown first pitch strikes to eight of the nine batters that he's faced in tonight's ball game. He has allowed just one base runner. That's the hit by Terrence Long in the second. Number nine batter go tie then back to the top of the order and on help Baroa. Outside so it's full three and two after he jumped in front of go tie nothing and two.
Barroa waiting his turn. Bird brings the 3 2, and it is low ball four. Oh, that is very odd because Bird has one of the top efficiency at walks per nine innings this year. Only 30 walks in 29 starts over the last two years. Last year with the Atlanta Braves and now with the Angels. Didn't want to walk a number nine batter, that's for sure. Royals have options of one out. They've got a good contact hitter. Barroa up. And here's a guy who has surprising power with five home runs this year. Go tied his one stolen base has been caught a couple times. He's gotten his numbers back up after having a miserable season last year. Hitting 262 with eight home runs but was also sent down to double A. They were so disappointed in his play from 2003 to 2004. They didn't send him down to triple A Omaha. They sent him down to double A Wichita. Made 28 errors. That ball is spanked to McPherson. Goes across the diamond. It's the man. Gotai moves to second base. That's a wise decision. I mean, it, you know, it took a little bit of time to get to McPherson. He didn't want to try to force the issue at second there. So he just went ahead and took the out at first base. I'm not sure. Go ahead and get the sure out. He had it in his mind made up the whole time he's going across the diamond. Set his feet and threw. He had a shot at second base though. He had a force there but decided to get the guy who had hit the ball and on Hel Barroa. Now David DeJesus struck out looking for his time up. A little bit outside. If you're not sure in your mind you just get the out. That's that's what he, he was deciding. That ball was coming to him. Tying run and scoring position. Just outside. It's now two balls and no strikes. Bird has now thrown 36 pitches, 22 in the zone, 14 out. Just does graze that outside corner. Paul had his best year with the Kansas City Royals in 2002. Just a terrific year, winning 17 games, losing just 11. And he had one of the top seasons for KC in their last 15 years. That ball stroke well in the alley, right center. Rivera races, can't get it. And in comes the tying run, Ruben Gotai. De Jesus off for third. Kennedy won't make the throw. It's a trouble for DeJesus, who continues to be a thorn in the Angels' side. It's DeJesus' fourth triple. Bird left one out over. Right down the middle. Nice short compact swing. Good try. You really wanted it. Did Rivera, but there's no chance. Had Rivera even broke down and went to the wall, it still would have got there. Ball was well struck. Now Mike Sweeney, who struck out swinging his first time up to end the first inning. Ball and a strike to Sweeney. Over the last two years, Sweeney has been a major problem. He and DeJesus have done more damage, even though the Angels were beating up the Royals. But a 458 batting average for Mike Sweeney against the Angels since last year began. And Sweeney goes alley, right center. Rivera comes on and makes a fine running catch to end the inning. But Casey scores a run on the DeJesus triple to tie this game up at one. FSN West presents Angels Baseball brought to you by the entirely new GS the next phenomenon from Lexus and by Corona Extra miles away from ordinary. Steve Fiziak Rex Hudler with you on an FSN West 
Friday night with the Angels. Here's Adam Kennedy sending it up the middle. Nice backhanded play by second baseman Ruben Gotai to get Adam Kennedy for the first out of the bottom of the third. That's a nice stop, but he turned the other way. Usually, they'll go ahead and turn. What's easiest for their on their glove side, they turn around to give the momentum to their arm. But watch him how he reverses his turn and he goes the other way. Comes up. Pretty nifty move there. Don't see him move and turn that that direction very often. Usually you get up and throw to your arm side, but he turned it all the way around, showing his athletic ability. He was named the top defensive second baseman in the Texas League last year, now with the Kansas City Royals and the Bigs. See if Sean Figgins can do what he did back in the first inning. And tonight is the sixth time Sean Figgins has led off a game with a triple. He's got plenty of room in that gap. If he could hit one of that left center gap right here, it'd be running for days again. Playing him a little bit to pull right side and left field. There he's over. Ouch. Foul that one off his leg. Exactly where it hit him. Oh, it hit Ooh. him above the knee. Ooh, that's really painful. Shin is one thing, man, but they bounce off your knee. That's that's painful. That's not good for a runner like Figgins. It's not good for anybody. Down in the count, one and two. Begins, sends it to left field. Terrence Long will take care for the second out. Angels still waiting for their offense to explode. In May, they're only hitting 228 and averaging three and a half runs per game. Mike Sosha knows the scoreboard shows that the Texas Rangers already have won. It's a final in Arlington. Six to two, the final. Texas wins their seventh straight game. So they currently have a half game lead on the Halos in the American League West. Aaron Erstad up. You know, their pitching has definitely carried him because bottom line is they're 14 and nine. Five games over 500 during this month. So not, nothing wrong with that. All of a sudden, Texas's pitching is really strong. Chris Young, that 6'10 right hander, one earned run for Texas today in eight innings. Kenny Rogers yesterday, he's got the lowest ERA in the American League, 1.69, gave up just one and seven last night. Chan Ho Park pitched well this week for Texas. That'll be the key for the Rangers. They get quality starts in their pitching staff. Watch out because they have plenty of offense. And the Angels have a strong offense also. The fact is, you take a look at their career numbers, and they're all down from a year ago as Erstad walks. I mean, Steve Finley's not going to be hitting 195, and Juan Rivera 250, Dallas McPherson 219, or Cabrera 225. But that's where they are right now. So she certainly hopes it doesn't continue this way, but this could be the year the Angels have to go out and get a hitter. They might have to do it through a trade or some way to get this offense going. Well, we've heard the stories about this young man, Mike Sweeney, but they do not come from the Angels organization. Sweeney is from this area, and he has enjoyed terrific seasons with Kansas City, but they have all been in losing years. He's heard the rumors the last three years, so it's nothing new to him. Bill Stoneman, a very patient general manager, and Mike Sosha, he's patient with his players, and usually, they're right. They're great baseball minds, and they certainly have their best, the Angels' best interest at heart. They've got plenty to work from. They've got a nice minor league system. They've got an owner who's dedicated to winning here. Fans love a winning product, and the Angels are doing that. They're just missing that that designated hitter area really is the, is the big sore spot. But, you know they're they're going to be patient and wait. They've got plenty of time. Four good months left. It'd be nice to see Finley. Have a good night. He started with a single and an RBI. And of course, the Angels have not had the services of Vladimir Guerrero this week. He's in the disabled list with the shoulder problem. Vlad picked up a bat today and was around the batting cage. And Mike Sosh and Darren Erstad 
both went over and said hey, hey, hey don't even think about swinging that bat we need you in in a week or so and he said oh I'm just carrying it around it's a new bat I wanted to get the feel for it right it's very frustrating for a guy especially like Vladdy who loves to play not used to being on the disabled list I talked to him today before the game and he said the hardest part is you know when the team's not hitting well then he knows he can help but he's got to just sit and ride the bike. Erstad goes the pitch gets away from Buck and Erstad has a steal of second his second stolen base this year. Well it's the fifth time in Vladimir Guerrero's career he's been on the disabled list but only the second time since 97. Little peek back. See what the hitter did. Erstad gets in the scoring position. Finley with a great count. Carrasco knows who's on deck. The guy who leads the Angels in RBIs, Garrett Anderson. Chopper to first base. Swing, he gets it to Carrasco. And Finley barely out at first. The Angels done in the third. We're still tied at one, going to number four in Anaheim. Royals one, Angels one. We go to the top of the fourth inning. Veteran Matt Stairs will lead things off. Stairs goes after the first pitch, pops it up, foul territory. McPherson makes the catch. One down. It's that Aflac trivia time. And it's about Kansas City and their successful days. 1985, the Royals won their only World Series title. Who were the four starting pitchers in the series? We'll give you the answer later in the game, but. One of them is here tonight. And one of them is a high school coach in Southern California. Two of them are, as a matter of fact. Well, there's a strike at the knees, but that was a good team. The uh, Royals in 1985 won the World Series. That was the series they were down three games to one to the St. Louis Cardinals and came back and won it all. What is Emil Brown? Wouldn't have happened if Deckinger had to miss that call at first base. Oh, you had to bring that up, didn't you? Yeah. Facts are facts. That was a really tough call there. Well, they won the seventh game 11 nothing, running away with it. And the kid from Southern California threw a complete game shutout. I think he was like 21 years old. So that is a hint on who one of the starting pitchers was. But that was a lineup of Willie Wilson, center field, and Lonnie Smith, old skates, he played left. Daryl Motley was the right fielder. And he hit third in some of the games of the World Series. A shot down the line by Emil Brown. Anderson chasing it down, and Brown will stop at second base with a double. But George Brett played third base. They also had Frank White, and Buddy Biancolano was the shortstop on that. Kansas City team. Fastball inside part of the plate. Brown just turned on it right by McPherson. Nothing he could do. That ball was by him. Good reaction for Brown. Brown's seventh double. Those were the glory years for the Kansas City Royals, who at one time were one of the most proud organizations in baseball. Being a small market team really hurt them. But 85 was their crowning moment, winning the world title over St. Louis. Show me state series. Jim Sunberg was their catcher. Hal McRae, the designated hitter. And the, the guy who, in his era, may not have been the best, but had the best nickname. Steve Bye Bye Balboni. Bonesy. Paul Bird gave up a single to Terrence Long. He's given up a single, double, triple in this game. In the first three and a third. Long flares one to left, and it will drop for a base hit. Brown will now come home, and Garrett sends the throw. It's cut off by McPherson. They throw to second, and Casey takes it to one lead. Brown. 
He didn't read that ball very well from second base. He could have scored easily if he just came hard. That ball's in front of him. He saw it. Garrett Anderson was fairly deep. And he slowed down getting towards third base. So Garrett didn't think he was going to go. So he kind of was going to lob it in. But that, that ball fell well in front of Garrett. See how he just kind of came up, did a little crow hop there. And then all of a sudden, Brown decided he would take home. So Garrett Anderson got caught with a deke. The decoy is. Brown slowed down and stopped. Well, that, that wasn't a very good play. Brown, see him watching it. He's stopping it. That ball's 20 feet in front of Garrett. If he was coming hard the whole way, and you could see they wanted him to come home on that. By the time Garrett reloaded, it was too late. RBI for Terrence Long. KC goes up 2 1. Mark Tian fouls it into the glove of Benji Molina, so he's down in the count 0 and 2. KC being aggressive, they know Paul Bird will be. As a matter of fact, Bird throws the second fewest pitches per batter in the American League, just 3.3. The American League leader is Minnesota's Carlos Silva. 2.9. So if you know that guy's going to be around home plate, be ready to swing. And Bob Schaefer's Royals have after being swept in Texas. Angels defense, they're going to. They can't afford any middle lapses, any letdowns out there behind Bird. Bird relies on his defense. Well, particularly when your offense is not surging. The Angels have been uh, a very cold team in the month of May. That ball hit to left field. Anderson going back. He makes the catch. Back to second base. Terrence Long, two out. Come watch the Angels and Royals tomorrow night. All fans in attendance will receive an Angels wristband courtesy of Wild Rivers Water Park. Plus receive a two for one cool offer to Wild Rivers Water Park in Irvine. Log on to angelbaseball.com and purchase your tickets now. He and twice has flied out to Garrett Anderson and left John Buck. Popped up his first time. He's 0 for 1. Ground ball short. Cabrera has it. That does it for KC, but they score the run that takes the lead. It's the Royals 2, the Angels 1. Two one KC over the Angels after the first meeting ever between the two franchises last month. Chivas USA was a little angry as the Galaxy cruised to a three one win. Now with the MLS season in full tilt the stakes will be even higher as Chivas hosts the second installment of the Super Classico. That's tomorrow six thirty on FSN West. DJ Carrasco will face Garrett Anderson Juan Rivera Benji Molina in the fourth. If anybody gets on Dallas McPherson. Garrett popped up to the shortstop in his first at bat, but made a fan happy there. The play in left field the previous inning to allow that run to score didn't make many fans happy. It wasn't a very good play by Garrett. He's hoping to redeem himself here. Got jam. Carrasco will cover. Anderson is out at first base. One down. Well the Angels have been shut down by some mighty good pitchers recently in the Chicago series all four were outstanding but this is D.J. Carrasco who is looking for his first career win as a starter and the Angels have to break out of their season long slump sometime they came in 11th in batting 244 10th in runs scored dead last in walks and dead last in on base percentage the Angels have to put together some good at bats they are simply not squaring up that baseball. They have made it easy for Carrasco. The only man who gave him a hard time was Sean Figgins to start the game with his leadoff triple. 
it's a hacking team. It always has been. They've always been an aggressive hitting team. They've been very high on on base percentage. But Mickey Hatcher still says they still have to be disciplined enough to swing at strikes. And they've been swinging at a lot of pitchers' pitches lately. Up the middle, Rivera squares it up and gets a base hit. Fourth hit of the game for the Angels. Yeah, this ball right down the middle. You want to hit it where it came from. Lots of times, but he hit the top half of the ball and sent it down, which was perfect. With top spin on it, it's going to get by. If it gets by the pitcher, that's a base hit. Didn't try to do too much on that swing. Benji Molina had a leadoff single in the second inning. Angels see a pitch out. John Buck's throw is right on the money, and Rivera is out. He guessed right that time. Angels trying to get something going. And Rivera now has been caught five times. They know that Molina's a contact hitter. And also know that Mike Sosha likes to hit and run, but he's out by a mile. Things not going the Angels' way offensively, the way they want to. This is a team that they need to take two out of three of, three, two out of three from. I mean, you know, you got the best team in baseball. They just left town. They split with them. The Royals have been horrible lately. The Angels are going to do something. They need to do it now. Molina hit hits it well. De Jesus got a great jump and makes a marvelous catch in center field. Wow. Hard luck. Benji Molina has been swinging the bat very well, but hasn't doesn't have much to show for it. This was a, a very nice play on the dead run. Fell right into it. Nice play. We head to the fifth inning. Paul Bird down 2 1 to the Kansas City Royals. Ruben Gotai will come up and he takes outside ball one. Bird has pitched very well recently, but just about every single Angel pitcher has. They have thrown 18 quality starts in their last 23 games. But the Angels' offense has not helped out, and Orlando Cabrera will take care of Gotai to get the lead man out. Our game recap is brought to you by Bank of America, the official bank of baseball. De Jesus splitting the gap. That'll score a Royal. And this one, this ball just fell in there. Brown wasn't sure if he wanted to score or not, but ends up scoring. So that's a higher standard than Bank of America. Now Baroa for Bird. He is over two twice grounding out once to short once to third. Well, they were expecting big things from Barroa after he won the rookie of the year in 2003 hitting 287 with 17 home runs showing unusual power for a guy his size. But then as we talked about a down season last year both on and off the field. He had some personal challenges that he had to go through when he came back. He had a, a solid last six weeks of the season. Even Kansas City hoped for this year, and he's been the shortstop just about every single night. He edged Hideki Matsui in the 2003 Rookie of the Year voting. It was the closest balloting since 1979. When Alfredo Griffin, who's now the first base coach of the Angels, tied John Castino for Rookie of the Year honors. McPherson should have it, and he does for the second out. 
Well, we asked that trivia question about the great 85 season when the Royals won the world championship over St. Louis. Who were their four starting pitchers in the Heat series? Well, you know who was game seven. It was Brett Saberhagen. But Buddy Black was also on that team with Danny Jackson, Charlie Liebrandt. Mark Gubazak came a year later. Three lefties on that staff. Blackie, one of them. Danny Jackson had a real nasty slider. And of course, Dan Quisenberry was in the bullpen with that submarine pitch that just would dive at the knees. And they won on pitching because offensively, HUD, they weren't that strong. With Buddy Biancalana at shortstop, he wasn't hitting like 400. He was hitting right around 200. And they also had Daryl Motley. Jim Sundberg was towards the end of his career. Lonnie Smith was a guy who could either be great, go four for four, or go 0 for four with three strikeouts. <laughs> world championships and world championships. You got that right. Sent out of play. The Angels will have to fight on without their star, the American League MVP, Vladimir Guerrero, for at least another week. Vlad said maybe in a couple of days he'll start swinging a bat. He has a slight separation in his left shoulder after the slide at Dodger Stadium last weekend. This guy's tough to pitch to, David DeJesus. He steps up there and it almost looks like you've got Rod Carew at home plate for the Angels. He's hitting 460 against the Angels. About 220 against the rest of the league in his career. Great eye, and he's the guy who had to replace Carlos Beltran when he was traded to the Astros last year. And when he had replaced Beltran early in the season, when Beltran went down for a little bit, he only had one hit in 23 at bats was pressing they sent him down but when Beltran was traded he came up and just played excellent baseball. He's an energy type player and he loves to play he's got the tools too. he's got great speed we saw him make that nice catch. In the gap off of Benji Molina's bat. College guy went to Rutgers. I was impressed with his batting on he only swings at strikes. He's 25 years old from New Jersey. Royals fourth round pick 2000 out of Rutgers. He's got a pretty good idea. He's got 14 walks and 160 at bats. That's, that's not too bad. 25 strikeouts a little bit high for a guy like this. It's good speed. Bird looking for one here. The Hazers pops it up center field. Steve Finley. Makes the catch, ending the inning. A solid fifth inning for Paul Burr. The Angels need some offense. They scored just one through four. It's only the third start of the year for DJ Carrasco, but he has controlled the Angels with one run allowed in four innings. In the fifth, he'll face hitters seven, eight, and nine Dallas McPherson, Orlando Cabrera, and Adam Kennedy. Pearson was the star last night with a booming home run that went over 420 feet to center field, erasing a 2 1 deficit and giving the Angels a 3 2 win. He missed this one high in the air to left field for Terrence Long. One down. Well, nothing says Memorial Day weekend like Angels baseball and a patriotic. Fireworks spectacular. Come out to the ballpark tomorrow night and root for the A team as they play host to the Royals again. Then sit back, relax, and enjoy the post game fireworks show courtesy of Wells Fargo. You can purchase your tickets tonight at angelsbaseball.com. Well, fans that are here tonight will get a little preview after this one. We always have a great Friday night fireworks show here. Have a good crowd. For the Angels to Break one open here. Get on. Get some runners on. 
A strike to Orlando Cabrera who popped up to the catcher's first time up. The Angels have four hits in the game. Two came in the first inning when they scored their run. Cabrera 195 in the month of May. But his career average is close to 270. The problem is the Angels are all going through it at the same time, which is very, very disturbing, and yet there's always that line. Well, if they're all going in the slump at the same time, they could all break out of it at the same time. That's what Mickey Hatch is hoping. But the good thing is, is their rotation is so strong, and that's where most of your wins come from anyway. Cabrera pops it up left side. Tian, two outs. I was talking to our good friend Mark Langston today, and he said we were talking about the Angels team, and he said, "Hud, do you remember in '95, our offense was so good that year. We we were scoring 10 runs by the second inning and third inning. We carried the pitching staff the whole year. When our offense went into uh, a slump, was later we had a 12-game lead in July and August, and then the offense stopped hitting the pitching. They didn't know how to recover. They didn't know how to carry the offense. So this is a good thing that their pitching is so good right now. They're going to wait for the hitting to come." You'd rather, rather have it that way. You'd rather have great starting pitching and a great bullpen because that's going to win you most of your games. Timely hits, they've gotten them. 14 and 9 this month. And the Angels' 3.48 earned run average is third best in the American League. Well, they're in good shape. You know, and they're going to hit. It's just one of those things that it's not easy to do. Guys press too much. They. They all know they're not hitting. They, they hear what the press is saying about them and things like that. So what a hitter does is he tightens up a little bit, tries to do too much. In this game, less is more. That's why Mike Sosha called off batting practice yesterday. It's a good idea. You shut him down. And you might see more of that, and that's good. Sometimes batting practice can be overrated. Mike just wanted the team to separate their focus and thinking about the troubles. And just let it go and focus only on today. That's why the Angels can't think about sweeping a series or taking two of three. They can only focus on winning that night. This at bat, this next pitch. I had a nice talk with Steve Finley before the game. He said, What are you working on? Anything with your feet or your hand adjustment? He goes, I'm working on getting base hits. That's what I want. It's not happening. He says, Forget about the past and what's happened in my career. I'm working on hitting today. Because it's tough at night going home. You think about your struggles and things like that. And the tendency for a hitter is to try to pull everything when you're in a slump. You want to try to wait back and use all fields. Kennedy pops it up. David DeJesus in center. And DJ Carrasco has thrown a collar around the Angels. One run through five. Mike Sweeney will leave things off for KC when we come back. FSN West presents Angels Baseball brought to you by Coors Light the coldest tasting beer in the world and by GMC we are professional grade. Welcome back to the Big A where Kansas City has a 2 1 lead on the Angels Paul Bird gets ready to start his sixth inning of work he faces his old teammate Mike Sweeney and Sweeney swings and misses looking fastball got the off speed strike one. Eight home runs on the road. They moved the fences in a bit in Kansas City, different from the old 1970s and 80s days. Wow. Sweeney to center field. Finley got 10 from the warning track, pulls it down. Now, when Paul Bird was a member of the Royals and had that 17 game win streak, is we take a look at Mike Sweeney. Ball right down the middle. He missed it. Look at it. You know, he opened up his hips very nicely there. He had good head position, but he just missed. Just got under it. Hit. Uh, didn't get it quite on the sweet spot of the bat there. Transfer though, he's a big, strong guy. He knew he missed it right away. That stairs. Erstad, what a play. Back to the bag. That's gold glove. Saved a double. That ball kind of got lodged in the webbing of Erskad's glove. Couldn't quite get it out when he first wanted to to feed it to Bird, so he'd take it all the way here. Half a step and a dive. You can see the ball. See, he got kind of got stuck in his webbing. He sees it. So 
Well, he says I better run it to the base instead of giving it to Bird. Good decision. Two quick outs in the sixth inning. Right center Steve Finley. And it is off the wall and Emil Brown has his second double of the game. That's some opposite field power there he showed. Bird with an off speed pitch at 85 miles an hour he supplied all that power. Did Emil Brown. Finley just looked up there's no chance he was going to get to this one. Another one down the middle Bird's got to be careful in there even against the Royals. Passing the league and hitting with. Still big leaguers and you can. Hit a mistake a long way. Brown with a nice swing. They now have five hits in the game and four of the hits have been from their five six guys. Emil Brown has two doubles and the guy you're looking at now Terrence Long is two for two with singles. T Long came in I mean like iced tea. He was hit 154 the last month of the season. A single to right, a single to left that drove in the go ahead run in his last at bat. One ball, one strike. Bird sinking that fastball. That's a nice effective pitch, especially inside to a lefty. Tanners have a sweet spot down and low, and so does Terrence Long, especially when he was hitting well with Oakland. He liked that, but he was a little undecided on that swing. Half swing. So he goes away, and the pitch is taken. Two balls and one strike. Long now 29 years old from Montgomery, Alabama. Sixth big league season. Came up with the Mets. Taps that one to second base. Kennedy will take care of it. And that will do it for BC in the sixth. Two runs allowed by the starting pitcher, Paul Bird. Royals with a 2 1 lead. DJ Carrasco has held the Angels to just four hits and one run in his third start. Only five in the big leagues. And Buddy Black, he's saying, hey, you know, the Angels continuing their excellent starting pitching. 3.01 ERA in the month of May, the lowest in the American League. They want Sean Figgins to continue what he's doing, though. He's a catalyst. Last night, first pitch of the game. Triples down that right field line. And then in the first inning in the night's game, almost identical. It's in the same spot. And this time he had to slide in the third base. Nonetheless, Sean Figgins is doing exactly what they want him to in that leadoff spot. Get on base, make something happen. Look at all the triples he had last year. Shattered the Angels' record, held by Devon White and company. Rasco came inside. Makes Sean move his feet. Count goes to one and two. Carrasco has walked just one batter. That was Erstad in the third. Biggins not showing any problem with that foul ball off his right knee. In his last at bat. It's good to see he didn't. You can see him shaking that leg a little bit though right now. I guarantee you he felt that. A swing, but he went. First strikeout for Carrasco. But the Angels really have only had one good swing on him in the game, and that was Biggins' triple in the first inning. The singles by Finley, Mo Molina. Well, Molina's was a solid shot, but Rivera and uh, Finley. With his ground balls rolling through the infield, so the Angels still in dire need of. Getting a sweet part of the bat of the baseball. He, Carrasco used to be a three quarter sidearm delivering reliever. And they wanted him to bring his arm angle up on top to give him a better release point, to stay more consistent. And so he's done that, but he still occasionally will drop his arm angle down. That gives him a little bit more movement, but can leave the ball flat out of the plate. This guy, Hanson. So he's made some improvements with. The, Hanson's happy with and he's got good stuff. 92 93 mile an hour fastball. It's change up and sliders his best pitch.
Three balls, no strikes. Carrasco to Erstad. This is the only man he has walked. He walked him with two out in the third, and Darren stole second base. Steve Finley waiting his turn. He's driven in the Angels' only run. There's a strike to Ersty. And a line drive that finds the glove of Mike Sweeney. Wow. Anything the Angels hit hard, they're making the plays. That'll contribute to some of their offensive woes as well. Some of these guys have been hitting balls like that all year. They just haven't had a lot of luck. Sweeney makes a nice play. On it. Left his feet. Look at that. How much air he got. Kept it right in the end of his glove. A little snow cone action. Steve Finlay single drove in a run in the first. Grounded out to first in the third. Young man, just an exceptional talent and a quality teammate. If you, you talk with the Royals and what Mike Sweeney has meant to the organization and what he has done. I mean, he really works hard in the Kansas City community, working with Children's Mercy Hospital and the Boys and Girls Clubs of KC. Great teammate. But after suffering so many seasons in Kansas City, he wants to play for a winner. That may not happen in his tenure with the Royals. They are in a rebuilding mode once again. Kansas City last year won only 58 games and lost 104, the worst record in the major leagues and in the franchise's history. Actually, in the American League, because Arizona did have 111 losses, they finished 34 games back of Minnesota. They're 19 and a half back of the Chicago White Sox in late May. Burgos starting to warm up. Ombreo Oryx. Sweeney, well, the Angels hit too hard in the inning. Nothing to show for it. Wrong man they picked. The Sweeney picks him clean. And KC with a 2 1 lead going to the seventh. Angels offense hit it a little bit too hard. Maybe soft is better for them. Well, like many pitchers, DJ Carrasco has had found success against the Angels, who have been in a May slump. Paul Bird continues his excellent work. He's allowed just two runs in his six innings, but he finds himself down two to one. Angels were down 2 1 yesterday going to the seventh inning, and the result was a 3 2 victory on a two run home run by Dallas McPherson. Mark Tien has squared up Paul Bird twice and sent Garrett Anderson back in left field. Garrett made the play both times. He's 0 for 2. Now a 2 for 23 slide. But Tien really a big part of their future. He's 23 years old from Yucaipa, California. He was the Oakland A's first round pick out of St. Mary's. He's always shown a high average and good on base percentage, but not much power in his career. Again to left field, and Garrett Anderson drifting back. That's almost the third straight fly ball to the same spot. He's over three. But T and Rex only 18 home runs in over. 1200 at bats in the minor leagues before this year and he has just won this season they, no. they need better numbers from that from the third base spot yeah he never has hit for power like you said but you know they're hopeful that this guy's going to generate enough off speed and learn enough about the American League pitching that someday he will but you know, he was a high pick so they're expecting something from him so John Buck doesn't have the credentials that Dallas McPherson has the two of the guys that got in the Beltron deal were Tian and this guy, John Buck, catcher with the Houston or organization. You can see Buck's gotten hot in his last five games and he's needed to, but they've made some adjustments with him. Barry Pentland, the hitting coach there with the with the Royals. Got him to le level his bat off and lay it on his shoulder. Make it a lot shorter to the ball. 
before he was his hands were so far back it took him too long to carry it through the zone so he lays the bat on his shoulder all he has to do is just pick it off and throw it down so you got to make adjustments when you're hitting and you're especially when you're scuffing Benji thought he had a strike three call there doesn't get it Mike Sosha argues with home plate umpire Jimmy Wolf. <laughs> That's Mike's right. got an argument. That's at the knees. Uh, that rope right there. He didn't argue a whole lot though. I, I give him a lot of credit. He's not one of these managers that's always badgering the umpires. There's a base hit as Paul left it up in the strike zone and John Buck gets himself a single. He thought he had the strike out. Look what happened. Got him a base hit. And coming your way after the ball game, the Southern California Sports Report. We have a story on this Angels game. Game one with Kansas City and the Angels. Kevin Kennedy will have his big league analysis, and Kelvin Escobar will have a report on Kelvin getting ready to go tomorrow against KC. Ruben Gotai up. He has walked and popped up. His walk was the result of the first Royal run score after the triple by DeJesus. Tomorrow it'll be Ryan Jensen, a rookie, against Calvin Escobar, and Sunday at one o'clock, Ronelvis Hernandez against Bartolo Colon. Now the Angels have now worked into the seventh inning. Their starting pitchers have done such a great job. This is the 21st time in the last 28 games. It's marvelous consistency. John Lackey last night, Jared Washburn worked into the seventh. Did give up four runs, but battle and gave his chance it came a chance to win. Erstad has it, touches first, has no chance to get John Buck, who moves on to second base. Halos need to keep it close. Erstad right there holding the runner on, backs up. Wants to catch that ball and throw. Just touches the corner of the base, but got the out. It's a good thing it stayed fair. That was an easy out for Bird. He'll take it. Royals 243. Average with runners in scoring position this year. Paul Bird really wants to bear down the way the team has been struggling offensively. They don't want to get let Kansas City extend their lead from two to one. The row has been hot of late. And he sends a ball to left field for a base hit. In comes John Buck, and they will extend the lead to three to one. That was off the end of the bat. Again, the runners that are in scoring position tonight. The Royals have been picking them up. Ball's down and away, and he just went with it and kind of tapped it out there. A little bit more pressure on the Angels' offense to come back, but really the pressure is the pitching staff, and they, they constantly can't make mistakes out there when their offense has been struggling like they have been. With Bird doing the best best job he can, certainly keeping his team in the game. And the league has hit 292 off of Paul Bird. He finds a little bit too much of the plate sometimes, but he's the guy who works fast, stays down, keeps keeps the ball in the corners, and keeps the team in the game. You give right. up three runs in seven innings, you should win the majority of your games. But the Angels have been really mired in a terrible slump for such a long time. 228 average coming in in the month of May. They have a winning record in May, but it's all been because of pitching, just averaging three and a half runs per game. But Mike Sosha continues to say he's very confident. They'll generate the offense from the guys in the clubhouse. And he said, but if it doesn't materialize, we'll first look within the organization for solutions. And then if they're not there, then we'll look outside. But it's premature to even be talking about that. Yeah, they're very patient. Bill Stoneman has done a nice job as the GM here. They've constantly improved this team year to year with great players, star players. The reason they're generating so many fans here is because they're winning. They've got a winning product. 
And as Mike Sosa said the other day when Bartolo Colon gave such a great performance against Mark Burley, he said, You hate to waste great pitching. Hitting, the hitting's going to happen. It's going to come. It's just had come on this month. Outside, three and one. People, yes. 93 pitches now for Paul Bird. And Buddy Black has a left hander warming up in the bullpen along with the right hander. The lefty is Jake Woods. The right hander is Esteban Young. Three and two to David DeJesus. In the air, center field, long run for Steve Finley. He does not get it. And it's a base hit for Kansas City's David DeJesus. Boy, they are getting all kinds of flares and bloops. Yeah, they're, they're not exactly hitting the ball, but that's how the Angels need to hit it. They've been lining some shots right at people, but see how you do when you hit it soft. Sometimes they fall in there. And Bud Black's telling Ron Renicky the same thing, I'm sure. Strange game to try to figure out at baseball. Sometimes you go, you know, why didn't we have him playing way in and to the left? <laughs> you can't figure this game out. And anybody that tells you they're an expert and they know it all, they're not telling the truth. I remember that line from Mike Schmidt, great third baseman for the Philadelphia Phillies. He said, as soon as you think you have the game figured out, it will reach up and punch you right in the nose. Oh, I mean, that or in the gut and knock the wind out of you. Well, a dangerous batter here, the Royals' best, Mike Sweeney. He is 0 for 3, and he swings and misses at a third slider. Yeah, he's looking fastball there. He knows what to do with runners are on base. He's an aggressive hitter. Just to get that first one, the pitcher tries to get in there. He knows Bird's a strike pitcher. Sweeney to left field. Foul. You know, the start of that White Sox series he had John Garland coming in looking for his ninth straight win against a rookie Santana who gave it up in his first major league outing. You know, you're thinking there's no way the Angels are going to win. And Santana ends up throwing a complete game shutout. And then you get the Royals coming in here. They have the worst record in baseball. You know, you just can't figure this game. There's no way you can look ahead. That's why Mike Sosha's one game philosophy really works and it has since they won that World Series in 2002. Well, that one skips back to the screen and will score a run. It's 4 1 KC. Yeah, that right there has got to be a pass ball. I mean it didn't look, look like Benji Molina just missed it. See. Yeah, I mean, you know, that ball should be caught or knocked down. It's like the Angels just mentally are flat right now. Paul Bird's out there doing all he can. He can't control the, the doinkers for base hits and things like that, but little plays like that you can control. It is a pass ball, and now the pitch to Sweeney and Bird gets the strikeout, riding a fastball up and in. But KC gets two and improves their lead to 4 1 over the Angels. Kansas City has a 4 1 lead over the Angels in game one of this three game series. We're in the bottom of the seventh inning and the Angels really having a difficult time. We have a new pitcher coming on for DJ Carrasco. And it will be Ambriex Oryx Burgos. This is his 13th game this year, has a rather high ERA. 
It's just his first year in the big leagues and he will face the Angels Garrett Anderson Juan Rivera and Benji Molina. Ombre Oryx Burgos has three straight scoreless appearances after allowing runs in his previous three games. He's got a hard fastball and a split finger. I see a good one. Anderson hits it high and deep to Jesus at the wall. Says he has it. He does. came in at 27 wins and 20 losses facing a team that has the worst start in franchise history of Kansas City and the worst record in baseball 13 and 34. But to be quite honest with you they are being embarrassed tonight. Burgos gets the fastball in there he's got a good one at 97 on the last heater. The Royals had lost, have lost 16 of their last 22. The manager resigned two weeks ago. I don't know how Buck picked that. I mean, that looked easy. Garrett just missed a home run. None of that, just a little bit. But you know, there's just been a few mental mistakes. The Angels look like they're flat mentally tonight. Yeah, this is the flattest we've seen them this year. It just had a very emotional series. Every single game was extremely close with the White Sox, but they split the series two wins each. Winning game one on one of the best games we've seen this year on Monday night with the Urban Santana complete game shutout of Chicago. Then they lost in 11 by one, lost in nine, four to two, and one last night in a marvelous comeback three to two on McPherson's game winning seventh home run, seventh inning home run. Barroa throws out Rivera. Two down. And the Angels, a team that have been in first place every single day this year. They could fall out tonight because the Rangers won six to two in game one of their series with the White Sox. Just four hits tonight. Not much you can do except take extra base hits or extra hitting before you you, you do a soft toss. Uh, you know you just hit it your way out of slumps. That's the, the way you they've done it in this game for years. And you hope that they're, 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 they're they've been unlucky. The hitters have. You know they've hit some balls hard tonight. So you know the, the only thing you, you, know, you, you do is you just hang in there. There's nothing else you can do. And none of these guys are quitters. They're not going to quit. Go home and give up. Heck, they haven't gotten this far in their careers to, to do that. But what managers don't like are the mental mistakes. They understand all the, you know, being in the right place, at the right time, and the unlucky hits and things like that, and sometimes the lucky hits. But they definitely do not like mental mistakes. Get here, he's got some life on that fastball. Splitty. And Molina drops it into right center field for a base hit. You know, that's how you hit him. Nice and soft. So Benji is two for three. And the Angels down by three will have up Dallas McPherson. Went deep last night, his second home run of the year. Benji would have had another hit. De Jesus not made a nice one, but here's that play or that nice hit again. We got to show it to you. That's a beautiful swing in a timely fashion. Two run homer. Yes, that work. Power on power here. Town ball, second base. Go time throws out McPherson. The Angels done in the seventh. They trail 4 1 to KC.
been surprising these guys, but I'll tell you, DeJesus helped him out with a liner there off Molina's bat. Another sparkling play here by Gotai. And they weren't done as Mike Sweeney chips in here, robbing another halo. So right when the Angels are tr trying to come out of their offensive woes, the defense of the Royals is not letting them. And Jake Woods comes out of the bullpen to take over for Paul Bird, who allowed four runs in his seven innings of work. Woods 16th game this year with a solid 225 ERA last year as a starter in the minor leagues 115. He pitched an inning and two thirds in his last outing at Dodger Stadium and gave up a run and uh, that one and two thirds. He'll face the lefty Matt Stairs and then Emil Brown. There's a curve ball get me over curve he's got a slot or a change up. And a fastball. Oh, beautiful bender that sweeps away from Matt Stairs for strike two. <laughs> Left handers are only hitting Jake Woods at 185. Ball skips back to the screen. Good to see Woods get back in there. He hasn't pitched in a while. I believe Jake and Dallas McPherson will be down in the Lake Forest area tomorrow. With Jose Moda and Terry Smith as the Angels Caravan heading down to South Orange County. Right off of El Toro Avenue at the Bank of America. The 2 2 pitch, a little bit high, 3 and 2. Royals last night lost to Texas, 8 to 1, swept by the Rangers. Stairs pops it up right side, Erstad takes care of it. And there's one down to start the eighth inning. Angel fans join the Angels tomorrow morning from 10 a.m. to noon at what we were talking about, the Bank of America, located at 22491 El Toro in Lake Forest for another exciting Angels Caravana presented by Albertsons, Bank of America, Coors, and the LA Times. Don't miss out on this great opportunity to meet some of your favorite Angels. That's going to be great as Frankie Rodriguez and Dallas McPherson are going to make an appearance, along with Terry Smith. Jose Moda, that'll be awesome. Fans are going to want to get to see those guys, the future of the Angels. And Frankie is getting ready to come back to the disabled list. Yeah, we'll have to throw a simulated game on Monday. Throwing a game, excuse me, a rehab assignment Monday at Rancho Cucamonga, and then join the team in Chicago on Monday night. So he likely, we hope. You see him activated for that White Sox series when the Angels hit the road for a long road trip, their longest of the year, to Chicago, Boston, Atlanta, and the New York Mets. And those are four very good teams who are combined 60 wins and just 26 losses in their home parks this year. <laughs> That'll be a, a grinder. We'll see how the Angels come out on that one. So stay tuned. Here. A lot of miles they're going to cover on this next road trip. Now tomorrow they'll have Jensen and Escobar. Sunday Hernandez against Colon. Then on the road. Angels have never seen the Braves or the Mets. So interleague takes them to the East. It's been a while since they played the West. San Diego and Colorado. Dodgers, of course, they play the Dodgers though every year. Arizona. Angels took two of three from the Dodgers at their place, Dodger Stadium. They'll face them in late June. Woods gets back to back pop ups of Matt Stairs and now Emil Brown. Two outs. Told you Texas had the win tonight, six to two. The Rangers with four more home runs. They lead the American League with 75. 
Chicago had taken two of three from Texas last week. Oakland though lost 4 1 and the A's really laboring. I mean they're 5 and 18 in May and Zito got the loss. Cliff Lee the victory. Gil Mesh went for Seattle against Tampa Bay and Mark Hendrickson. And Tampa Bay got the win. win. That's one team that Lou Pinella has been able to beat his old Seattle team. He's now 11 and 6 against the Mariners. Against everybody else, he's only won 39% of the time with Tampa Bay. Yeah. Oakland. Gosh. It's just not pretty. All the starters they got, those young guys they, they expected to do well, they haven't. Well, it's tough to ask him to do that well after you lose Hudson and Moeller. And what a matchup in Boston. New York's Randy Johnson uh, at Yankee Stadium, excuse me, took care of Tim Wakefield in Boston. 6 3, the final score as Jake Woods moves Terrence Long off the plate. Long, two for three in the game. Three weeks ago, New York was six and a half games behind Boston. Now they are a game and a half up, and they have won 16 of their last 18 games. New York was struggling with their pitching staff. Then all of a sudden, it got hot, and the offense stayed hot. The Angels need the opposite to happen. Their pitching staff has been so good, starters and bullpen, but the offense has been held to five runs or less in 27 of the last 29 games. Even if the Angels can't come back and win this one, as long as they stay within five or six games of the lead, they're going to be okay. They're going to wait. That offense will get hot. The Angels, are, there's no panic here. None at all by that man. He's a, a very nice young manager. I mean, he's a great manager. Stick took his team in just three years to the World Series, their first ever. Woods gets Terrence Long. Kennedy throws him out. A one, two, three inning for Jake Woods. We head to the last of the eighth. Cabrera, Kennedy, Biggins for the Halos. Kansas City with a 4 1 lead over the Angels. Burgos gets a strike across to Orlando Cabrera. Cabrera twice has popped up in this game. 0 for 2. Right now, a 227 batting average this year. Had a slow start last year with the Expos. Finished off well with the Red Sox, helping them to the World Championship. And this is sent back up the middle. Gotai drops it, picks it back up, and high throw, and Cabrera is safe. Fastball out right out over the plate. Short, quick swing. Cabrera got to it. He's taking off. He's watching it. Backhand by Gotai missed. And that's what allowed Cabrera to get on. I don't know how the official score will rule this, but that's, I would say it's an error. What do you think, Chris? I agree. It's a play that you ask Go Time, sure he would say, got to make that play. Pick it, throw. Kennedy sends one in the alley. And splits the gap. Cabrera will race around third and come home to score. And the Angels have cut the Kansas City lead in half. It's exactly what you do on a mistake like that. You capitalize. So the Angels, a good fastball hitting team, starting to come alive here in the eighth inning. Shot to the opposite field, and that's what Kennedy's been getting a lot of his hits lately. It's his third double, and they've all been in that gap out there in left center. Kennedy, four RBIs on this homestand, and out comes Bob Schaefer. He may 
maybe making a pitching change as the tying run will be coming to the plate and Sean Figgins. And that's why they're going with the big left hander Andy Cisco. You've got a a switch hitter and then a couple of left handers three as a matter of fact and Erstad Finley and Garrett Anderson will face the rookie. We'll be right back. Jack of the box game summary the Royals have a 4 2 lead over the Angels Biggins triple scored in the first the Angels 17 total runs in the last week bird three earned against his ex team another quality start for the Angels but they want a quality start to add up to a victory and Adam Kennedy gave him a start after Cabrera and they have given Cabrera a base hit followed by Kennedy's double to drive in a run the new pitcher is Andy Sisko pitched in class a ball last year game number twenty two he was hot early he has not pitched as well of late Rex he's allowed three home runs in his last three and a third innings well, that's just what the Angels are looking for big guy six nine. See that fastball slider and a changeup is what he features. Figgins, 266 from the right side. Or excuse me, 109. That's 266 overall, but he's been scuffing from the right side. 109. Wait for him to come in here. Check in, keep this rally going with nobody out. At least try to get the ball to the right side, move the runner. It's a ball to strike from Cisco to Figgins. Ball by at 95 miles an hour. He throws downhill. It's the only where to go if you're six nine. He's 22 years old from Seattle. Last year, 2001, with the Cubs. Cubs draft pick in 2001, second round. Foul back. As I said, Class A last year. And he was selected in the Rule 5 draft. But a guy who struck a lot of batters out, but making the jump from Class A to the big leagues was very impressive. But he almost made it because he had a great spring. Now, with the Rule 5 situation, you have to keep the guy in the Major League roster for the season. Cisco has proved that and more. And he strikes out Sean Figgins. Second time, Figgy's gone down in consecutive at bat, swinging. Buck wanted it inside, but he left it out over. It's the way. Two strikes, Figgy wanted to at least try to get the ball to the right side, make it a productive out, but he couldn't. As the kid Cisco just blew it by him. So Darren Erstad will try and pick him up. Pick up the Angels, get Kennedy home from second base. Erstad robbed of a base hit in his last at bat, ripping one that Mike Sweeney had to make a diving stab at and record the out. Kennedy had a big lead at second base. Erstad hitting a buck 80 against lefties. Crowd of 40,834 picks it up at the big A. Game one of this three game series. Cisco works him away, and if he can take the ball that way, there is a lot of room in left center field. Giving the Angels batters that gap, and off a of guy who throws this hard, hitters are sometimes going to be behind that 95 mile an hour fastball. But Erstad is hitting 308 with runners in scoring position. Go time throws out Erstad two gone. Kennedy goes to third in the play. Now the Angels are hoping Steve Finley can pick them up against Andy Cisco.
Finley with an RBI single back in the first. Broken back blooper. That's a base hit. That will get Kennedy home and the Angels within one. how you do it. Hey, if you break your back, it doesn't matter. Just get the job done. That's what he did. Inside fastball, it sawed him off. But that's not how hard you hit it. It's where you hit it. Finley now with two RBIs and two singles. Good piece of hit. And that means he was, was trying to square it up for the middle part of the field, needing just that, a base hit. Mike Wood has been warming up at the Kansas City bullpen to get ready for the right handers. They'll come after Garrett Anderson, Rivera, Molina. Right now it's the lefty Cisco against the lefty Garrett Anderson. And GA is due. He is 0 for 3 in the game. And one big fly from Garrett will end a lot of anguish on offense because the Angels laboring in this game against a team who came in. With a terrible record of 13 and 34. But as Mike Sosha told the media today, hey, they took two of three from us in April. We totally respect this team and know they'll be a tough fight. Garrett hitting 379 off of lefties this year. He's just killed it. He'd love it right here if he could. Two and one. Garrett likes the ball up. Use that. He uses the whole field. They're still giving him the left center gap. Now they're even. Two balls and two strikes. Wow. Big time numbers. 526. Well, that's our story here. Two out. Finley is not yet in scoring position. But an Anderson double, extra base hit, could get him home to tie it. Cisco's 2 2 pitch. Popped up. Right side for Mike Sweeney. A good eighth inning though for the Angels as they cut the Kansas City lead to four to three. And we head to the ninth. Angels down by one. Tucking away though, let me tell you, that's a sign the Angels have all shown this whole season. How they they can come back, they get great two out hit, and they're not done. KC with a 4-3 lead on the Angels. The best damn sports show period is the greatest nightly sports show on television with host Chris Rose and co-host John Sally, Rob Dibble, and Rodney Pete. Tonight, will the Spurs sweep the Suns? Can Warner make the card soar? It's coming your way tonight at 10.30 only on FSN West. Warner, new quarterback of Arizona. And Jake Woods here in the ninth inning. He pitched a perfect eighth inning. We'll face Mark Tian, John Buck, Ruben Gotai. Well, Mike Sosha has shown a lot of confidence in Woods early in this season. He's a rookie, but he's leaving him in here with a, you know, this down by one run. But with stuff like that, two curveballs getting over for strikes, this guy's got a good idea. Tian has flied out three times to left field. And again, he has that inside out left field swing, and the Angels have him shaded over that way. More so in the outfield than the infield. Right now, that pass ball by Benji Molina that scored the Royals' fourth run is looming large right now. It would be a 3 3 game. Angels have not played well to open this series. Particularly defensively, the, the play by Garrett Anderson that allowed the first run to come home, and then the pass ball for the fourth run. See Woods trying to stay away from Tian. Stay on that outside corner. There's a few curveballs in that one fastball. He's not overpowering, but he relies on location. Does a good job at it. Keeps the ball down. Throws changeups to righties. Well, 
the Angels will have a, a last shot with Rivera, Benji Molina, and Dallas McPherson. Tien rolls it up the middle. Kennedy right there. One out. KC did not beat the Angels last year. The Angels were seven for seven. And with the right hander John Buck, Mike Sosha will go to the pen. The lefty Jake Woods has done his job getting everybody out. So the Angels will go with Esteban Young. We'll be right back. FSN West presents Angels Baseball brought to you by Jack in the Box where we don't make it until you order it and by Jack Daniels crafted with care. Please enjoy it the same way. We're at the Big A. We're a crowd of 40,834 on hand. Watch Jake Woods put him down in order. Base four retired all four to hold on to a 4 3 deficit with Kansas City. Now the Angels hoping that Esteban Yon can do the same. This is game number 16 for Yon. 4.71 ERA. He suffered the loss Tuesday night in that 11 inning affair with the White Sox. It was just his first decision of the year. Gave up a run in that one inning of work. He faces John Buck. Buck chases the split. And it's a 1 1 count. Fastball slider split. Esteban's going to try to do, but he has been roughed up. He's allowed six earned runs in his last six in the third innings. I'm hoping he can keep it down and away from these righties. John Buck, one for three. It's out of play, so Jan has a one two count against John Buck. Buck has pretty good power. He's busted three home runs this year. They think he's going to be a big part of their future. Hit 12 home runs last year. Acquired from the Astros. It's kind of the personal project of former manager Tony Pena. Looked at foul back and out of play, and there was a rumor today about who Kansas City would be going after in the managerial department. Would they go with a, a guy who has experience? And one of the names mentioned was former Angel skipper Terry Collins, who's with the Dodgers organization. He will be talking with Kansas City. Bob Schaefer, he said, heck, you know what? I'll take it if they want to give it to me full time. He, he enjoys it. He's a very good mentor to the young kids. He's a knowledgeable guy, managed in the minor leagues. He's got plenty of experience. He's been a, a director of player development. He's done just about everything you can do on office, on the field. And talking with some of the Kansas City Royals today, they said the same thing that they really like playing for him and that the team has settled down a bit. Even though they're coming off a sweep by Texas, the Rangers red hot. They just won their seventh straight game tonight. 6 2 over the White Sox, who have the best record in baseball. Well, I played for Bob Schaefer in 1981 with the Yankees in Greensboro, North Carolina. And I can tell you that he's a He's a fun guy. likes likes to have a good time. Not quite like Tony Pena. Pena was a little bit of a, you know, he he's a, an excitable guy and he's a player's manager. But Bob Schaefer, he's a good instructor. He can teach, and that's what you do at this level now. Buck to right center field and deep. Juan Rivera has to watch it go over the wall for a home run, and that really hurts the Angels. Uh, Solo home run by John Buck. John didn't want to do it, left it up and out. Look at that swing, though. He stayed right on it. Let the ball get deep, and he put a good, easy swing on it. Didn't try to do a whole lot, but you really got to get it up over that big wall there in right field. Not happy, and neither is Mike Sosha. But those are the guys that Jan has to get out. It's Buck's fourth home run. I mean, there might be fans saying, why didn't he stay with Jake Woods, who ret retired four straight batters? Well, Jan's job is to get right handers out, and he must do that for the Angels. Going through a rough time right now as the Angels' offense is. 
Ruben Gotai. Command in the strike zone has been a problem for Jan. He's a thrower, he's a big guy. And a base hit back up the middle. One for three now, Ruben Gotai with a walk. Angel Barroa knocked in a run in the seventh inning. And anywhere KC scored two times. They have a 5 3 edge on the Angels. And a strike thrown by Esteban Yan. It'll be Baroa, then De Jesus. Cleveland beat Oakland tonight 4 1. Yankees, we told you, topped the Red Sox 6 3. Johnson getting the victory there. Minnesota over Toronto 7 2. And the Devil Rays beat the Mariners 5 4. Detroit over Baltimore 4 3. Ground ball hit to Adam Kennedy. Cabrera gets one. Save the first base ball. Kennedy went with the backhand flip. Got to get a lot on that ball. He didn't follow it very well, but Cabrera did a nice job getting on top. That's, you know, there's a, a little line you can draw if you're a second baseman as to where you want to do that backhand toss, but lots of times if you're going to get something on it, you like to follow that feed. It was a good feed, but it's almost like a changeup. David DeJesus comes up. He is two for four in the game. He has tripled the drive in a run in the third and singled in the two run seventh inning. Look at those numbers against the Angels. Barreau has stolen four bases this year. Does not have an aggressive lead. There's a soft hot fly left field, and DeJesus has a three hit game. This guy is just unbelievable against the Angels. Darn near hit 500 in his career against the team. <laughs> you can see him, he's saying, I'll take it. That's Joe Jones, the first base coach, there with him, kind of saying, Hey, look, kid, it's all right. we're, we're staying alive in this inning, and they're just pecking you on. Of course, that John Buck home run was no peck, that was a long drive. Right now, Yon is laboring again. Staben has been a big leaguer for a long time, but he'll go through stretches like this where it looks like he's a closer, and then at times it looks like he's having all kinds of times getting rookies out. Well, he has to face the best that Kansas City has to offer, and Mike Sweeney. Sweeney rips it to left field for a hit, and the ball skips by Anderson. In comes one, in comes two. Sweeney races to third, and they'll send him home. Not the ninth inning the Angels were looking for at all. Anderson's fourth air of the year lets them all score. Sweeney on an inside pitch turns on it, gets a base hit, thinking there was going to be a play at the plate. Garrett charging it, then he goes down. Hopefully he's all right.
Well this has been one of the ugliest games of the year for the Angels. They have not defended well. They have played with a flatness about them. And Mike Sweeney just blows the game right open. It is now an eight to three game after the Angels had one man out and were down by just one run. And then Mike Sosha made the change and took Jake Woods out brought in Esteban Yan. It's the play that you thought he would make. Right hander to face the right handers but Jan has just had a rough time getting anybody out in the inning. Low. Well, Angels lose this one. It'll be the first time all year they've fallen out of first place. Texas is just flying high. They've won seven straight beating the Sox today. Getting both good hitting and good pitching. Chris Young today gave up just one run in eight innings. And then, of course, Texas hit four more home runs. Four more home runs. They have 75 on the year. The Angels have hit just six home runs the last two weeks. That stairs pops it up. Anderson makes the catch, but a miserable ninth inning for the Angels. Four run score. Sweeney knocks in one. Two more come home, including himself, on the air by Garrett Anderson. Mike Sweeney, who grew up in these parts, grew up an Angel fan, busts the game open and gives Kansas City an 8 3 lead. Coming your way after the ball game, the Southern California Sports Report, Angels post game. And uh, skipper Kevin Kennedy will be giving his report on the major leagues. We'll talk about Kevin Escobar as he gets ready to make his start tomorrow, coming off the disabled list. Mike Wood, a 6'3 right hander, 25 years old from West Palm Beach, Florida, comes into the game, 3.62 ERA. Last year, an ERA almost six in his rookie campaign. He will face Juan Rivera, Benji Molina, and Dallas McPherson here in the bottom of the ninth inning. A rough ninth for Jan. A rough ninth for Garrett Anderson as well. GA 0 for 4 with one play at the fourth inning they allow their second run to come across for the Royals and then in the ninth an error that allowed two more to score. See that sinker wood features a sinker slider and a split finger. This might be one of those games where they have that closed door meeting. Because the Angels certainly not doing the fundamental things tonight and that is unlike a Mike Sosha team. It is, but certainly way too early to panic. There won't no. be any. There won't be any panic. And there, but you know, sometimes you do have a little talk. A walk to Juan Rivera, and the Gatorade Player of the Game will be John Buck, the catch who caught a marvelous game with P.J. Carrasco. Carrasco, who's after his first win as a starting pitcher in his major league career, he had two hits, including the solo home run in the ninth. And there is Carrasco. The Angels were hoping to break out of their offensive slump against the kid who was just making his third big league start with the Kansas City Royals. Best start of his career. Here is Benji Molina, two for three, and the only time he made out, he hit the ball as hard as he's hit it on the night. As David DeJesus had to go into the right center alley and make a diving catch to get Benji. John Buck, Guy Hansen, they're all going to come out and see what's going on with Wood here. There's a young man who is one of the three that is now on the big league Kansas City roster that. The Royals acquired in the Carlos Beltran deal, along with Buck and Tian. Jeremy Affeld, he's on the disabled list. He's their lefty. Has a little bit of a closing. Oh. 
Strike. Hansen comes out for a visit, and all of a sudden, Wood throws strikes. He's unscored upon in his last six appearances. That covers seven and two thirds. In the hole. Bobbled by Barroa. Can't get anybody. Backhander took a high, a little bit of a bounce on him. By the time he rebounded, he couldn't get it. Rivera was in there easily. So Benji Molina reaches on the air, and the Angels have a chance here in the ninth inning. Down by five. Dallas McPherson, the batter, would have been a little different. Down by one. Yeah, it would have. But that's the old story. Pearson chases the first pitch. It was not in the strike zone and misses strike one. Dallas 0 for 3 is grounded out twice, once into a double play, and also fly to left field. He's down, strike two, and Wood hasn't thrown him a fastball yet. Sinking that sinker away. Buck wants it there. Pearson's power is to left center. He can get one, get one up. He can drive. And with 0-2, Wood's job is not to give him anything too good. Rivera reached on the walk. Molina on the Baroa error. KC came in losing 11 of their last 12 road games. Well, he split fingered it. It was a good pitch. Away, down. You don't want anything too good, like I was mentioning, especially to McPherson. Hit that two run home run last night on a fastball in. Low 90s heater right on his hands and he took it out. Dallas was down nothing in two. Wood has missed down and now wide to even the count. Two balls, two strikes. Royals have nobody up in the pin. We're expecting Woods to pitch through this. Well, there's a base hit to left field. Rivera comes home to score, and the Angels have their fourth run. Nice at bat by Dallas McPherson because he took exactly what the pitcher was giving him. That's right. Didn't try to do too much. Just laid it out there. Keep the train rolling here. Ball in the outer half. Reaching out. Look at that. That's upper body. See how he's bent over with his upper half right here, and as all of his arms are extended out there, goes with it. Just a, a nice little hand swing. Now Orlando Cabrera, who reached on an infield hit as the play was bobbled by Gotai, and he came around to score on the double by Adam Kennedy. And Cabrera tries to dump it to center field. That's a base hit. Molina stops at third. Trying to do all they can to peck away here. We got a couple back to back singles of guys just reaching out and slapping it. Same thing. Except he didn't have to lean over as much, but he used his hands just like McPherson. And it's not how hard, it's where you do it. Now the Angels have the bases loaded. Well, all they wanted to do when the inning started somehow get the tying run to the plate. Down five coming in. Now Kennedy's up. And he takes strike one from Mike Woods. This is just the 20th time all season that the Angels have had the bases loaded. And they are hitting 368. Kennedy rolls it to short. They throw it away. 
away. Molina scores. McPherson scores. Cabrera being sent home. Racing to third. Kennedy, he is safe. Wow, what a roller coaster. And Carrasco can't believe it. Neither can Bob Schaefer. And Rex, this is eerily looking like last year's Kansas City team, where they found ways to give games to the Angels. Routine double play ball right here. A nice little three hopper. Baroa. Throws it away down the line and up to get Kennedy into third base and Adam Kennedy represents the tying run. With nobody out the Angels have life. All of a sudden it looks so bad in this inning. Here it comes again. The hitting. Angels now with 10 hits. But two huge errors in the inning on that man Angel Barroa. And he came in defending so well. Now Casey brings their infield in and Sean Figgins can tie it. He swings, sends it back up the middle. The Angels have come back from five down to tie it against KC. Wow. Cabrera says the same thing. And we talked about this game and how you just can't call it. You never know what can happen. Angels made a big error. Allowed some runs to score, but two in this inning have really hurt the Royals. Now the Angels looking to win it. Infield drawn in. You want to aim back up the middle. There's a ball up out over the plate. Biggins does exactly that. Now with his base stealing ability, see if he can get into scoring position. But a beauty. Wood records the out, but Biggins moves into scoring position for the game winner. What an incredible comeback. Now it's been two gifts by shortstop Angel Barroa the game should be over but the Angels have roared back to tie it up a walk an error a single another blue pit and another error on that young man Angel Barroa then a single by Figgins to tie the game at eight this is this is just painful for Kansas City Angels refuse to lose Part of the time Kansas City gave it to them the other time the Angels reached out and took it from Kansas City but that young man has been very responsible for the Angels come back tonight the Angels down eight to three they've now tied it up at eight McPherson gave him a great start but this should have been a game ending double play instead three run score Wow anything can happen in baseball. Certainly, what a roller coaster ride. Emotionally for the fans, the players on both sides, this is a, a mind wrenching game. No doubt about it. The Angels on the verge now of winning it here in the ninth inning. And we will see a new pitcher. He is a guy with an overpowering fastball, Mike McDougal. Game number 22 this year, has a four and a half ERA, but 24 strikeouts in 22 innings. Good fastball slider. Fastest man on the team is at second base and Sean Figgins. Finley having a good night. Maybe he can make it even a better night. Well, Rex, at the beginning of the game, you said, hey, what if he throws up a three hit game and gets his offense started? Well, he's got two so far. And I also asked him before the game, what are you working on lately? He goes, just getting hits. Two so far with two RBIs. A third would send the Angels home. Game winners. He had a ninth inning game winning hit back in April. McDougal misses his second straight pitch, and as you can tell, he can ride it in there. That last fastball, 96 miles an hour. See that big gap again in, in left center, but still, just any kind of single through the infield, figures with that speed. It'll be difficult to throw him out. Three and zero. Oh. Well, you know who is 
comes on deck. Garrett Anderson. And would this be an unbelievable payback for Garrett after two of his mistakes resulted in four Kansas City runs. Now they will intentionally walk Steve Finley to set up the double play with Garrett Anderson. Well, we see it, see it a lot in baseball. He's got a chance to go from goat to hero right here. And you know, it goes back to a story I, I, I like telling about Paul O'Neill. Paul O'Neill was playing Seattle. Had a miserable game. Struck out his first four times up. And then still had a chance in the ninth inning to come up and get the game winning double. Well Garrett Anderson has had a tough night defensively and offensively he is 0 for 4. Three times popping up and also grounding out. A guy with a great fastball and a guy who is a great fastball hitter. Garrett Anderson. You know what Paul O'Neill said after that game when he had four strikeouts and then won it? What did he say? He said, you know, it's interesting this game. It always gives you a chance to come back. But he goes, it drives you crazy too. You <laughs> don't believe it. Lasco, his longest outing as a starter, was all happy, and then it turned to shock. Bouncer to first. Sweeney has only one play, and that is first base. Anderson is out. The Angels move up. Well, the guy who started it is now coming to the plate. This inning began with Juan Rivera, and he walked. He would later score on the base hit by Dallas McPherson. Figgins at third, Finley at second. Rangers is like to just go ahead and finish it off here after that incredible momentum they're on. Ball one. Boy, he ripped it in at 98 miles an hour, and McDougal has been hot. Last six games hasn't walked anybody and has struck out nine. Breaking ball. And he dropped the slider on it. 86 to 96. That's a big contrast. And when you throw that hard, that's the only pitches you need. Just two of Took over for Tony Pena, who resigned. He has won five games, and the team's lost nine in his tenure. Sweeney thought he had finished off the Angels' top of the ninth. They've come back to score five and tie it up. Rivera ground ball to Roa. He makes the throw this time, but two of his errors in the inning. Allowed the Angels to score five runs in the last of the ninth. The one error on Adam Kennedy's ground ball resulted in three run scoring. It's just amazing. Angels' comeback is still intact, tied up at eight. Look at that ninth inning a little strange Kansas City scores four. they think they've got a comfortable 8 3 lead then their shortstop Angel Barroa makes two critical errors in the ninth inning and the Angels rally with five runs to tie it. Well here is Scott Shields. And the sixth save and seven chances last night. He will face Emil Brown 
Terrence Long and Mark Tian. Shields, look at that ERA. 0.96. He's been unhittable. Ground ball, Cabrera. One down. I mean, that combo of Shields and Donnelly has just been remarkable. They've allowed two runs combined their last 34 outings. And that is with Francisco Rodriguez, the Angels closer on the sideline. Brendan starting to loosen up just in case the Angels do not score. And they last of the 10th inning as we've gone to extra frames here in Anaheim. Long hits it to center field. Steve Finley just rests back, makes the catch, and Shields has the first two men out. Yeah, you know, Shields, you can't sit on any particular pitch from him, although you can expect a 94 to 95 mile an hour fastball that sinks. He's got a slider, curve, and changeup. This guy's got four pitches. He's dangerous. He's got a nice, fluid delivery, and easily one of the Angels' best pitchers. Martian tonight looking for his first hit. Three times flying out to left, rounding out to second. But the Angels' pen has just been brilliant this year, third in the American League, a 2 8 2 ERA. And even though they have lost Frankie for two weeks, I mean, that Donnelly Shields combo has been terrific. And Joel Peralta coming up from the minor leagues. Jake Woods continued excellence as a rookie. They're getting it done. I'll tell you, looking up at that scoreboard, seeing the Angels with 11 hits, eight runs. What a nice thing. I don't care how they got them. Ian swings and misses on the Shields fastball. This is, this, as crazy as this game has been, hitters have got to have some confidence now. And Kansas City's got to be reeling. I mean, it's like they've been hit in the gut. Like, what do we have to do to win a game? I mean, Kansas City, they have lost 16 of their last 22, and all of a sudden that becomes part of your personality. Angel Baroa came in defending well. Two huge errors in the ninth inning. Hadn't made an error all month. That's tough for a shortstop. You know, shortstop's a tough job. But, you know, you're, but you, you're only human. You're going to make an error once in a while, a couple times a month, maybe. But this guy saved him for one game in a crucial time. Rex, you have a saying first man sure, second man quick. He rushed his throw to get the double play. Especially his throw. He put a lot on it, and it was off the mark. Gotai had no chance. I see would have dove for it, but you, it's hard that close to, together to, to dive for a ball that's been thrown really hard, high and away. Let's see if Shields comes back with the breaking ball. He does to get the strikeout. A beauty from Scott and a 1 2 3 10 for Scott Shields. That's what you need the rubber arm from Shields to come in and Finish him off easily. FSN West presents Angels Baseball, brought to you by Gatorade Thirst Quencher. It's in the MLB. Is it in you? Steve Fiziak, Rex Hudler with you at the Big A in Anaheim. The Angels are tied with Kansas City. An incredible ninth inning rally coming from five down to tie it up at eight. Now they have a chance to win it in the tenth. Benji Molina will be leading things off. Benji does get on. I was watching Mike or Jeff Devannon kind of jogging in that Angels dugout. We likely will see a pinch runner for Benji Molina, but first things first, he's got to get on. He's been on three times, two singles and an error. Devannon's all ready to go. Loosened up, he's been running up and down. He's been breathing heavy. He's been ready to go. Just what you want. Have your guy ready when you put him in there. Molina swings and misses at a slider from Mike McDougal. Well, McDougal knows Molina's a, a dead red fastball hitter and a good one, so he's just snapped off a couple sliders on him. McDougal was a big time prospect coming out of college, Kansas City's first round pick, 1999, out of Wake Forest. Wow. 
One and two. How about that back to back sliders. KC had him as their closer in 2003 and finished sixth in the American League with 27 saves, but he had terrible control problems last year after suffering with a stomach virus. He's come back strong this year and they hope he's their closer of the future. An all star in 2003. Molina barely gets a piece of the slide piece and it's two and two. Hugo, though, very careful with that fastball where he locates it. Been away from the hitters in two innings now since he's been in. Showing nice command with that hard heater. Pearson on deck. Could he make it two games in a row? Got a big hit in that ninth to help the Angels rally. It's a 3 2 count now. He started out Molina getting two quick strikes. Now Benji will be looking dead red for that fastball. A strike right down Broadway. He went with the slider. How about that? That is some, take some guts. I was thinking fastball as well because that was the pitch he was controlling. If you're going to get beat, you want to get beat by your best pitch on your best pitch. This is that 98 eight mile heater. And look at this one. This is just a, a slider right down the middle at full Benji. Right down the middle. And he's upset at himself. Not on that call. Right there. Just locked him up. Dallas McPherson. Ball one. Guy who throws this hard, you don't have to jump out and get a guy like this. You want to wait back, just use your hands, let him supply the power, and just put a nice easy swing on it if you're a big guy like McPherson. His power's the left center. He hits it well to center field. Look at this. McPherson's done it again. A game winner. The second consecutive night for McPherson. Showing his power when the teams needed it most. Incredible come from behind victory by the Angels to keep themselves with a tie for first place for the Rangers. They have not been out of first place all year long. Down by five going into the bottom of the ninth. They score five to tie. And then McPherson loves the fastball and busts it for 25 to dead center. Giving the Angels an incredible 9 8 comeback victory. Well, this one, like we talked about, a guy that throws that hard, there's no need to do too much, and he didn't. He barely even took a stride step with that front foot. Just let his hands do the talking, and that'll scramble that Angels dugout. It's an incredible emotional finish here for the Angels. Three days ago, they were talking about sending him out. The last two games, game winning home runs, Thursday and Friday nights. Dallas the hero in Anaheim tonight. That will do it from Angel Stadium for my partner, Rex Hudler. I'm Steve Fiziak. Now let's go to the Southern California Sports Report with Barry LeBrock and Carolyn Hughes.